This is the commander of the IC Dragonfly unit, Astrogator Novik. Astrogator, this is Yasna. I managed to get to the Condor's bridge, where Hitra and I led the attack on the cloud. But the Cyclops... Failed? Worse. The Cyclops got out of control, knocked down the probes. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Ray Hitra is planning now? I have no idea. Well, then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Condor. This is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat, this is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor Cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all these? Rohitra, Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces to prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree, officially, and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. That's why we need to change tactics. Hmm. To be honest, I don't see how changing tactics in this situation would make any difference. I strongly disagree, Novik. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Lydra. Please. Just tell me straight. What are you up to? I'm arming the charges. Arming what? Explosives? Cluster munitions? Hydrogen. What? Rehitra? Are you serious? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. Preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rahitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna, I know how it must look to you. A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. I know you understand. You like me. You would do anything for your crew. understand how you feel but you can't approach this problem in terms of revenge we are dealing with creations of necro evolution dead evolution and probably non-sentient ones taking revenge on the cloud is like whipping the ocean for sinking a ship exactly like xerxes we won't gain anything from a mindless attack on the other hand Knowledge about these creations may turn out to be crucial in helping their victims. In helping you, Rahitra. My memory, you could... It's possible. Well, thank you. What for? I haven't done anything. <laughs> for reminding me of my mom. But as long as the cloud is a threat to others, my condition comes second. You, Rahitra, are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. 
Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget Rahitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? Sentient or not, they are the enemies of all protein life. Argo, our enemies. Just like that? Yes. Please remember what we've learned. Before the machines came to Regis Three, this planet was teeming with life. Before the cloud wiped out all its competition. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasmin found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. <sighs> How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Our cyberneticist had a hypothesis before we lost consciousness. About the Lyrans. Yes, that one. Lyrans. Lyrans. It does ring a bell. Wasn't there a book about them? The Kraven's monograph. According to his notes, before the explosion of Zeta Lyran, the sixth planet of the system was inhabited by intelligent beings. Let's say their scout ship landed here under a disaster occurred. Some kind of reactor explosion, chain reaction. Suffice to say, the wreckage that landed on Regis 3 had no living beings on board. <sighs> Only the machine survived. And then what? They started bashing at each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotion. They don't argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis 3. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they already defeated the living organisms, why keep producing themselves? It makes no sense. What's a guiding principle of a homeostat? Ugh, I don't... Uh, that was a rhetorical question. It's all about survival and changing conditions, even the harshest ones. Further forms of necroevolution were no longer threatened by the local fauna. But they had to find sources of energy and materials from which they could produce replacement parts and offspring. Originally, their descendants were undoubtedly powered by radiant radiation. But on Regis, there were no radioactive elements at all. Oh, sounds familiar. When the energy runs out, you have to wheel and deal. Yes, the default source wasn't available anywhere. So they had to look for an alternative. There was a severe energy crisis and, and a conflict among the machines. Simply put, they fought to survive, exist. That's what evolution is all about, about selection. Wait, Doctor. We've established that these beings are mindless. Shouldn't the organisms with the most developed nervous systems win the game of evolution? In this case, instead of a nervous system, there was some kind of electrical one, but the principle remains the same. Uh, not exactly, sir. The most advanced of the mechanisms that landed here derived energy from their own radioactive resources. 
Simpler devices such as small repair systems could have had solar panels. And in that case, would have had a significant advantage over the others. But the other ones could defend themselves. They could attack. With atomic power. Yes, that's possible. But I see it differently. In necroevolution, the most successful beings were those that excelled in miniaturization above all else. Also, the sedentary creations. The former gave rise to the cloud, which the flies form when necessary in pursuit of a common interest. Meanwhile, the sedentary ones gave rise to a peculiar species of metallic vegetation. Those structures formed the city. So, it's still functional? No. For some reason, the city lost a fight for survival. And now, there are only rusting remains. Only one form survived. The microbots that conquered the land on Regis Three. So, these flies just adapted best to the conditions of this planet yes that's how it works so to summarize some alien race sent advanced robots to Regis 3 local dinosaur like monsters tried to eat them so the robots produced other robots which produced more and more robots until they fell victim to their own overproduction after a number of iterations and wars for resources they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I would even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. Yes, sir, do you agree? Well... Yeah. I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Ritra. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet, it's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water or food, only solar energy. <sighs> but what else could we do if not attack? We can leave this place, and never come back. We have a lander. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. You on the other hand? I'm surprised you didn't evacuate already. Well, I had to make sure you won't do something you'll deeply regret. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. Rehitra, for fuck's sake, be reasonable! You won't stand down, will you? An escalatory solution won't work. It will only needlessly draw the cloud's attention. And I won't have you endanger my subordinates. Oh, good one. I wasn't the one who sent her to the surface of this shithole of a planet. Yes, yes, I admit. We've all made mistakes. Place too much trust in our blasters and sensors in our protective fields. Now... Rehitra? Rehitra, over. He won't answer you, sir. Not anymore. Oh. Did you neutralize him? I put him to sleep. It's cruel, I know. He will forget everything. All over again. No, yes, no, you did the right thing. He wasn't listening to reason. I'd have blown everything up. Most likely along with the both of you. You actually saved his life. Now I hope the Invincibles crew thinks the same. The Invincible? Are you saying that... Yes, I'm staying on Regis 3. Yes, sir. You should fly away, Astrogator. Warn everyone from the Commonwealth. And I'll warn those who come here. So... All we can do now is... Yes, indeed, Doctor. Y yes, sir. It was truly an honor. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the right words. I hate moments like this, where nothing can be done, fixed, changed. All you can do is say goodbye. It's right. I feel the same way. Have a safe journey, Novik. Copy that, and thank you for your service, Yasna. Over and out.
Finally. It's them. They're switching through the channels. for me. To all units in the perimeter, this is the chief navigator of the USTA Invincible Cruiser. Please respond. Oh, they could slow it down a little. Mm, all right. Seems no one is answering here. I'll try another channel. units in the perimeter. This is the chief navigator of the USCA Invincible Cruiser. We're preparing to land on Regis 3. Hello, Invincible? It's Condor here. Oh, Condor, we hear you. I confirm. We picked up your coordinates yesterday with a message from a member of the Interplanetary Commonwealth. Invincible, I confirm. This is Dr. Yasna, the IC member. Dr. Yasna, nice to meet you. My name is Roa. Is it your message that we received? I yes. In that case, I'd like a confirmation. Are the rest of the crew still unconscious? Hey, you. I confirm. You. What have you done?
is the commander of the IC Dragonfly unit, Astrogator Novik. Astrogator, this is Yasna. I managed to get to the Condor's bridge, where Hitra and I led the attack on the cloud. But the Cyclops... Failed? Worse. The Cyclops got out of control and knocked down the probes. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Rahitra is planning now? I have no idea. But then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Condor. This is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat, this is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all these? Rohitra, engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces to prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree, officially and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. <laughs> playing defense sounds a lot better than we're getting our asses kicked. Doctor, not now, please. No, it's true. Fighting against the cloud is exceptionally difficult. But any opponent can be defeated. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Rietra. Please, just tell me straight. What are you up to? I'm arming the charges. Arming what? Explosives, cluster munitions? Hydrogen. What? Rietra? Are you serious? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos. 100 megatons. Oh, that's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. We really do have enough power. That's an understatement, Doctor. An amount of energy could rip the planet to pieces. I'm not an idiot. I won't send everything at once. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rahitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna, I know how it must look to you. A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. You know you understand. You like me. You would do anything for your crew. Not only do I understand you, I feel the same desire. But revenge is out of the question. Why? We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. Well, probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. While we express our suffering, rage and frustration, we won't accomplish much. We won't harm it. We won't instill fear in it. We won't make it surrender. I'm going to destroy it, Yasna. Not scare it, not hurt it. Exterminate every last piece of it. You, Rahitra, are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? 
I will never forget Rahidra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react to radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications to thwart the exchange of information. So, they see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking us? Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasin found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Our cyberneticist had a hypothesis before he lost consciousness. About the Lyrans. Yes, that one. Lyrans. Lyrans. It does ring a bell. Wasn't there a book about them? The Kramlin's monograph. According to his notes, before the explosion of Zeta Lyra, the sixth planet of the system was inhabited by intelligent beings. Let's say their scout ship landed here and that a disaster occurred. Some kind of reactor explosion, chain reaction. Suffice to say, the wreckage that landed on Regis 3 had no living beings on board. <sighs> Only the machine survived. And then what? They started bashing at each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotions. They don't argue. I'm sorry, but I don't know if there's any point in discussing this further. In short, we are facing an entity that has triumphed over countless adversaries, both organic and mechanical ones. I see no point in prolonging this discussion. To me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. So it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Oh, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. Yes, sir. Do you agree? Well? Yeah. I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Rehitra. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet, it's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water or food, only solar energy. Uh, but what else could we do if not attack? The Invincible is near. We can wait for its arrival. Huh, right. That is one solution. Although I was hoping you'd come back to Dragonfly. Back home. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. Rehitra, for fuck's sake, be reasonable! You won't stand down, will you? An escalatory solution won't work. It will only needlessly draw the cloud's attention. And I won't have you endanger my subordinates. Oh, good one. Stop arguing. But, Doctor... No, Astrogator. You can't always get your way. And you, Rehitra, blow up this cloud yourself and the entire planet if you want. Just let me fly away first. Can you at least do that for me? Yes, I'll wait. I've prepared Hopper for departure, but there's still a matter of access to the landing pad on the bow. Novik. How do you know about our landing pad? Well, 
You know what they say? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Astrogator likes big ships. <laughs> right. Anyway, someone has to break the force field and open the dome. The field automatically deactivates when the dome is open. It's the same switch on the control station. All right. Sounds simple enough. for the control. Okay, got it. Everything's ready, Astrogator. Copy that. Hopper is on its way. Good luck, Rahitra. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Have a safe flight, guys. The Commonwealth ain't all that bad. Connected. Great. Hopper is just landing. Okay. I can still make it in time. You don't think the hitra will start firing without warning, do you? I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Just close the hatch and... And what? Field two. We might get cut off. I repeat, we might get cut off. <laughs> 